Hey y'all, this is BG Coes and I am Brad Garropy. In the previous video, I showed you how to create custom helpers and actions for your plop configuration. But this might be making your plot file.js a little bit long and they're not very shareable. In this video, I'm going to show you the concept of extensions and plugins in plop, which they refer to as packs and how we can take our helpers and actions and make our own plop pack. Let's get started. So here's our original plop configuration. A plop pack is just another plop configuration. And as we see here, a configuration is a function that takes plop as the first argument. So let's make a plop pack that includes our custom helpers and actions. I already have a plop folder here. Let's make a new file called pack.js and let's just call it pack is the function name that takes plop as an argument and does some stuff. This is where we'll define our custom helpers and actions. And of course, we have to export the pack function. Now, let's take our custom actions and helpers, pull them out of the main configuration file and put them here into our pack. Don't forget the dependencies. We rely on file system and path for our custom action and slugify for our custom helper. So now we've defined our own plop pack. How do we import or load that into our main plop configuration? Well, it just so happens that plop has a method called load. And the very first argument is uh, one of two things. It's a string that either is the name of an NPM package or uh, a path to a file on your local system. In this case, we placed our file under plop slash pack dot JS. Now packs can contain helpers, actions, generators, or partials. You may not want to load everything a pack has to offer. You might just want a subset of that. So we have to provide a, an empty second argument here. Uh, our pack does not take any configuration. Uh, and, but this third argument is instructing it what to include from the pack. So in this case, we want to include helpers, true, and action types, true. Now, this isn't necessary, but we could have also said generators false and partials false. Just know that anything you don't explicitly state as true is assumed false. So there we go. This says load uh, a plop configuration from pack.js, provide, pr provide this pack no configuration in and of itself, and then include helpers and action types from this pack. Let's go ahead and give this a whirl, see if it works. We're going to run plop and we're going to call this blog post fingers crossed because we're scaffolding on a blog post uh, and then say, I hope this works for the description. Great. So you can see that in our content folder, then blog, we have a new post with our image and our index file. That's what we're looking for. So a plop can export or include many different things. Uh, let's take it a step further and split this pack up into two separate packs, maybe one just for helpers and one just for um, actions. So we'll make two new files. We'll call one helpers.js and we'll call the other actions.js. Now remember, this is just a function that takes plop as the first argument and we'll export that function. Perfect. I'm going to put the same thing over in helpers, change the names, and now we can copy our functionality over there. So our helpers go in helpers and our actions. I'm going to move over to actions. 
Again, don't forget the dependencies. Our helpers need Slugify. And our actions need FS and Path. Perfect. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about what a pack includes. Instead of you having to tell it, well, let me just show you an example. So now we can load plop helpers.js and plop actions.js. And now in each one of these, we're gonna to have to specify that helpers is true here and actions is true on this one. This is going to become a little bit cumbersome. If you are the author of your own pack, you can actually say what it exports by default. So the plop object has a method called set default include. And this is exactly what this pack is going to export. In this case, this is our helpers pack. We can set helpers to true. And very similarly in actions, we can say by default, action types true, uh, that this will include the action types. Now, back in our plop configuration, we can actually drop all these other arguments and by default, we know what this pack will be exporting. So let's try this. We will remove our old post and try to scaffold out another one. And indeed, it does work. Okay, now, finally, uh, I have shown that you can pull in plot packs from local files, but you can also pull them in from NPM. So I've created a plot pack actions that includes the copy action we wrote by hand here. So instead of pulling in actions locally, let's pull in Brad Garropy plot pack actions. Now this actually has to be installed. So let's install it as a dev dependency. It's a scope package, Brad Garropy slash plop pack actions. And you load it just by specifying the name of the package. Couple more seconds here. And let's try to run our generator again. We'll delete the old post run this again and we'll see that everything works as planned. Uh, Brad Garropy plot pack actions literally looks just like this. And um, if you haven't seen my how to publish an NPM package video, go check that out. I'll put a little box in the corner up here or up here and uh, it'll show you how to take this file and essentially uh, publish it to NPM as a package. So in this video, I've showed you how to uh, create your own plot pack, which is a collection of generators, partials, actions, and helpers, and shown you how to load those into any plop configuration. That's going to conclude my tutorial series on plop, the code generator. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more, you can go to bradgarropy.com. This has been BG Codes, and I am Brad Garropy. Later, y'all.